Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about stresses and deflection of helical springs from mechanical springs from the post DMM1. This is the second lecture of mechanical springs. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about different types of springs. And to sum it up, the main applications of those springs are the main type of springs are helical springs. These are generally used in railway industry and suspension systems in different vehicles. And conical springs, these are used in electrical contacts such as push buttons and battery contacts, like you can see in our TV remotes, all those. And volute springs, these are used in military tanks and torsional springs these are used in clocks automotive devices and medical equipment and door hinges and leaf springs these are used in buses and all and in railway carriers also suspension system disc or belly wheel springs these are used in clutch springs for engaging and disengaging the clutch these clutch springs are used this disc type and air springs are used in trucks, heavy trucks. Below the driver, these are placed. And uh, rubber springs, these are used as bushes. Selection of material for the spring wire. These are the factors to be considered while selecting the material for a spring wire. The load acting on the spring. The water load is acting based on that the material should be selected. The range of stress through which the spring operates and the stresses acting on the spring. The limitations on mass and volume of the spring. The space required for that spring and the mass of that uh, spring. The expected fatigue life and uh, the lifetime also should be taken into account and the environmental conditions like temperature and if it is a corrosive atmosphere these are also considered the severity of deformation encountered while making the spring this is the manufacturing considerations these should also be considered while selecting the material of the spring wire next these are the main types of uh, steel we are using for making the springs patent Patented and cold drawn steel wires unalloyed. This patented is some heat treatment process. This is mainly used uh, steel wires for uh, manufacture of springs. Oil hardened and tempered spring steel wires and wall spring wires. Oil hardened and tempered steel wires alloyed. Stainless steel spring wires. These are main types that are used for manufacture of springs materials used for manufacture of springs now come to stresses in helical springs of a circular wire what are the stresses acting on a helical spring consider a helical compression spring made of circular wire and subjected to an axial load w as shown in figure a so this is the helical spring the load acting on the spring is w let d is the mean diameter of the spring and the small d will be the diameter of spring wire and is the number of active coils g is modulus of rigidity for spring material w axial load on the spring t maximum shear stress induced in the wire this will be the tau maximum shear stress induced in the wire and c spring index capital d by small d p is equal to pitch of the coils the distance between the two two coils will be the pitch p see here initially the load w will be acting at the center we have to take that load from the center to this point because this is the coil which takes the load okay for uh, converting this load here, for uh, changing the position of the load, we need to insert two, two forces. One force 
डबल इक्वल टू डबल यू अपवर्ड एंड वन फोर्स इक्वल टू डबल यू डाउनवर्ड दिस अपवर्ड फोर्स विल बी डबल यू शोन हियर एंड द डाउनवर्ड फोर्स डबल यू एंड दिस अपवर्ड फोर्स विल कॉज ए क्लॉक वाइज सॉरी एंटी क्लॉक वाइज टॉर्क शोन हियर ओके दिस इज द एंटी क्लॉक वाइज टॉर्क और ट्विस्टिंग मोमेंट दिस इज द फिगर वी गॉट and here at this point there are two loads acting one is the direct uh, load w which will cause direct shear and this is twisting moment or torque acting which is the torsional shear now consider the part of the compression swing as shown figure b the load w tends to rotate the wire due to twisting moment set up in the wire this is the t twisting moment the torsional shear stress is induced in the wire in this wire the torsional shear stress will be developed a little consideration will show that part of the swing as shown in figure b is in equilibrium under the action of two forces w and twisting moment t we are designing for this two loads w direct shear and twisting moment t we know that t is equal to load into d by 2 the twisting moment will be load into d by 2 which will Give the twisting moment or torque W into d by 2. We also know that T by J is equal to tau by R. T is equal to J into tau by R. Okay. This tau will be the tau one, and J by R will be the polar section modulus, which will be pi by 16 d cube. Okay, section modulus pi by 16 d cube. By solving this, we will get tau one is equal to 8 W d by Pi d cube. So if you take this pi by 16 d cube this side, we'll get tau one is equal to 8 w d by pi d cube. The torsional shear stress diagram is shown here. In addition to the torsional shear stress induced in the wire, the following stresses also act on the wire. There will be direct shear stress due to load w and stress due to the curvature of the wire. Those are the two stresses acting on the wire. we know that the resultant shear stress induced in the wire will be based on the direction of acting tau is equal to tau 1 plus plus or minus tau 2 the tau 1 we have already calculated 8 w d by pi d cube and the tau 2 will be the w acting right the w load by area w by pi by 4 d square which will be the tau 2 Okay. By adding these two torsional shear stress and direct shear stress, we will get the maximum shear stress induced in the wire. Okay. Eight W D by pi D cube. If we take out this common eight W D by pi D cube, we will get one plus D by two D into eight W D by pi D cube. And this one plus two C, we we wrote this. One plus d by two d, where capital D by small d is equal to c, spring index. In that, uh, we will get one one plus one by two c. Okay, if you replace capital D by small d with c, this one plus one by two c is called shear stress factor. Okay. In terms of shear stress factor, this was the equation for maximum shear stress, and there is another factor called wall factor. by considering those uh, stress concentration we, the k value will be 4c minus 1 by 4c minus 4 plus 0.615 by c and the maximum shear stress tau is equal to k into 8wd by pi d cube where that k will be the stress factor or wall factor by considering all the stress factors okay next deflection of helical springs of circular wire now see the total active length of the wire total length will be length of one coil into number of active coils that length of one coil will be it will be circular right the circumference will be pi d that that will be the length of one coil and the number of active coils are n so we will get pi d n as the length of Total active length of the wire, and theta is the angular deflection of the wire, and acted upon by the torque T. 
when T is acted, or T is acted, or twisting moment acted, the angular deflection of the wire is theta. Therefore, the axial deflection of the spring delta is equal to theta into d by 2, which will give you the axial deflection of the spring. Now, we know that T by J is equal to tau by R is equal to G theta by L. From the relation, we took theta is equal to TL by JG. Okay. We know that J is equal to polar moment of inertia pi by pi d power 4 by 32 and G is the modulus of rigidity. If you substitute the L and this L value and uh, J value pi d power 4 by 32 in this equation theta is equal to L by JG we get W where torque is equal to W into D by 2 we know that from the previous uh, derivation and L is equal to pi d n total active length of the wire and J is equal to all our moment of inertia pi d power 4 by 32 and g we will get the 16 w d square n by 0 power 4 if we substitute this theta value in this equation 1 theta into d by 2 where deflection is equal to we get 16 w d square n by g d power 4 into d by 2 if we wrote in, in terms of spring index 8 w c cube n by z d and the stiffness of the spring or spring rate by considering the stiffness oh, if you want to calculate the stiffness that will be load by deflection stiffness is load by deflection that is equal to gd power 4 by 8 d cube n that is equal to gd by 8 c cube n okay Next, buckling of a compression spring. It has been found experimentally that when the free length of the spring LF is more than four times the mean or pitch diameter, then the spring behaves like a column and may fail by buckling at a comparatively low load. If the length, free length of the spring is more than four times of uh, mean coil diameter, then the spring behaves like a column. Okay, in that condition, that. Uh, spring will behave like a column and it will fail even with a smaller load okay so in that case where the free length of the spring is four times of a mean coil diameter we can calculate the load using this relation k into kb into lf where k is the stiffness of the spring load by deflection and lf is the free length of the spring and kb is the buckling factor depending on the ratio lf by d this is some factor kb by using this relation you can find out the load carrying capacity of the spring in this condition when lf is more than four times of the mean coil diameter next surge in the spring this is uh, the surge is the concept like resonance when the natural frequency of the spring is uh, equal to the natural frequency of that uh, whole machine or operating uh, equipment if those uh, two natural frequencies uh, will be matched then the spring will be spring spring will fail okay when one end of the helical spring is test resting on a rigid support and the other end is loaded suddenly then all the coils of the spring will not suddenly deflect equally because sometime it requires for the propagation of stress along the spring wire if a load is acted suddenly on one end then it will not transfer immediately it will take some time for the propagation okay a little concentration will show that in the beginning the end of the coil spring in contact with the applied load takes up the whole of the deflection if that load is acted suddenly at that at one end then it will take the total load without transferring it to the remaining coils okay and then it transmits a large part of its deflection to the adjacent coils after some time it will transfer to the adjacent coil in this way a wave of compression propagates through the coils to the support end form where it is reflected back to the deflected end and uh, again it will reflect it back to the deflected end in this case this is called 
this whole phenomena is called surge like you see the resonance uh, of a bridge you see it when uh, soldiers marching on a bridge related to that the surge in springs in that in this case the natural frequency we can find out using this relation d by 2 pi d square n root over 6 g g by rho cycles per second where d is diameter of wire capital d is mean diameter of the spring n is number of active turns g modulus of rigidity small g acceleration due to gravity and rho density of the material of the spring this is the derivation part in this lecture in the coming class i am going to uh, teach you the problems regarding this derivations thank you for uh, reference purpose you can use machine design by vb bandari okay thank you